Insidious Chapter 3 is a prequel. It takes place a few years before the first film in the series, and it's really centred around Elise, who was a, a supporting character in the first two movies, but now she's ostensibly the lead. And a young girl comes to visit her, Quinn Brenner, who's lost her mother to cancer. She really wants to speak to her mother, and so she needs the help of a psychic to do that. I can hear someone. Is it my mom? No, it isn't your mother. <laughs> and through this girl's desperation to contact her mother, she attracts the unwanted attention of this kind of demonic spirit. <laughs> I wanted the film to focus around her character of Elise, and she died in the first movie. So there was really no other direction to go, you know, except if, if, if we had not killed off her character in that first film, it probably wouldn't be a prequel. I don't want to die, Elise. You have a long life ahead of you. I cross my heart. It's like two girls, these two women at very different stages of their life kind of helping each other. You have to be very careful. If you call out to one of the dead, all of them can hear you. And when she goes into the, the world of spirits and demons, she's kind of a superhero. But in her day-to-day -day life, she's just an ordinary woman, like she could be your neighbor. That's what I like about her is kind of this superhero wrapped up in a Miss Marple package, you know, and you know, she's got a cardigan and a scarf. You know, she doesn't look like your average superhero. This was my first film as a director, so I, I really treated it like it was Long Day's Journey in Tonight. <laughs> I, was, I was so serious about this film and wanting it to be a contained piece. I, I'm not thinking of it as like, okay, and this will lead into part four and that'll, I think I need to think about all that sort of stuff once the dust settles, which will probably be about a month after the film releases.